Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Hello, Reshman. Hello, Pedro. <laughs> Welcome to Monaco, to the Grimaldi Forum for the UEFA Champions League group stage draw and football awards. Indeed, a very special welcome to all of our guests with us here this evening, including some of football's biggest stars, and of course the representatives from the 32 clubs involved in tonight's group stage draw. That's right, we have an exciting draw ahead. In addition, we'll also be presenting some very prestigious awards on this stage, culminating in the crowning of both the women's and men's Player of the Year, Rashford. Yes, indeed, but more on those awards a little bit later. First, we take a look back at some of the highlights of what was a truly thrilling season of Champions League football. It was indeed. It was a campaign characterised by record-breaking number of goals, and when the dust settled in Kiev, there was a familiar winner left standing. And you know, I still get chills when I look back <laughs> at some of those amazing moments from last season. So many magical times. Yeah, from that roller campaign. coaster of emotions. I really enjoyed last season. Yeah, and Real Madrid <laughs> making history with their third Champions League trophy in a row. Huge congratulations to them. Now it's time for our first award this evening. The President's Award recognizes a former player for outstanding achievements both on and off the football field. Previous winners include Sir Bobby Charlton, Eusebio, Johan Cruyff, Francesco Totti, who picked up the award here last year. Esteemed company indeed. And I like how you mentioned the Portuguese, Eusebio. Of course. Of course, representing his countrymen. Uh, now, to present the award to tonight's recipient, please welcome the UEFA president, Alexander Cheferin.
President, UEFA announced last week, and you announced that you had chosen to give this year's President's Award to David Beckham. Why did you choose him for this honor? Pedro, we all followed David's career, and we all know he was a fantastic football player. We know that he changed football image-wise, but it's much, much more than that. He uses the power of football to help the disadvantaged children all around the world. So for, for me, he was the obvious and the most logical chance uh, for that award. Thank you, President. Absolutely. But before we welcome David onto the stage, we feel it's only right to have a little reminder of some of his many career highlights. Beckham! That's absolutely brilliant! Beckham is that man. Monsieur David Beckham, Sir David Beckham. And please welcome on stage the President's Award winner, 2018, David Beckham. Hello. Thank you. Lovely to meet you. Congratulations. Thank you. David, welcome. Thank you. When you look back at some of those moments that we just had an opportunity to see, so many titles, so many experiences, both on and off the pitch, but as far as what happened on the pitch, is there a defining moment for you? Um, first of all, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, it's obviously great to be part of this evening. Uh, it's been a long time since I was at an award show like this, so <laughs> it's, uh, it's nice to be back. Um, yeah, you know, there was many many moments throughout my career. I was very lucky to play with some of the biggest clubs, with some of the best players under some of the greatest managers. Um, I think winning the treble uh, was uh, an incredible moment for me uh, and for Manchester United. Um, it, was a, it was a moment we created history. It was a moment we you know, created something that was so special for the club. You know, and winning the, the Champions League the way we won it was, uh, was incredible. So that was a, an amazing moment. But then, you know, each club that I've played for, you know, joining the clubs, you know, when I left Manchester United after so many years of being, you know, there, um, to join a club like Real Madrid and to play with the players that I played with, it was incredible. You know, to, to have a dream of playing for clubs like this was incredible. So, you know, there was many moments. Yeah, many moments indeed on the pitch. But Alexander touched on it, didn't he, away from the football pitch. You know, you've, you were once a young boy with just dreams of becoming a professional footballer. You're now a global icon of the modern game. Of course, there are young boys and girls all around the world who want to be just like you. How important is it for you to give back in your work now? Well, I think that's the strength of the game. It's the strength that, you know, the, the biggest and best game has around the world. You know, it has the opportunity to change children's lives. And it's not about just, you know, giving as much money as you can to different charities. It's about being there for these kids. And I've noticed it throughout my work with UNICEF that, you know, the, the power of this sport, you know, there are children in the middle of nowhere watching this game and they have heroes and they have heroes that are playing in the Champions League, that are playing in different games and different clubs around the world. And it is a real opportunity to help children. So, you know, that's, uh, it's, it's one of my proudest things to be involved in an organization that does so much for so many children around the world. Yeah, I'm sure it's making a difference in their lives and their aspirations as well. Wonderful stuff. Thank you. Well done on that Thank and you. your career. David, well done on the award tonight. Thank, Thank you very much. Thank the you UEFA much. President's Award winner for 2018, David Beckham, UEFA President Alexander Cheferin. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. See you later.
very special congratulations then to David. Well, we're in fact heading back to a city that uh, David will have very fond memories of when Madrid hosts next season's Champions League final. This time it's Atletico, though, who will welcome the world to their stunning new home, the spectacular 68,000-seater Metropolitano Stadium on the 1st of June. And Reshman, the road to Madrid starts mm -hmm. here tonight as our 32 teams find out who they'll be facing in the group stages. To help us make today's draw, we've reunited a pair of former Madrid rivals, an iconic Atleti striker, and the Brazilian who dazzled for Los Blancos. Please welcome Diego Forlan and Kaká. How are you? Pleasure. Lovely to meet you. you? We make noises on the Sound microphone. effects on the kiss. Why not? Lovely to see it. Why not? There Ooh. we go. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we shouldn't do the kissing, right? <laughs> Diego, I'll start with you. We talked about Madrid hosting uh, this season's Champions League final. How important is it for a club like Atletico to receive such an occasion? Well, it's great. You know, this is the best competitions for clubs and, you know, having the opportunity to play uh, at home, you know, in the great stadium like the Wanda Metropolitano, it's, it's, it's great, you know, the, for the fans, for the club. The club has been doing really well this couple of years, so it's, it's a great place, a great city to, to visit, to go for the fans, for the, for the clubs who have the opportunity to be in that final would be uh, really good. Yeah, it will be an incredible final. It is indeed an incredible city. Kaká, you spent four seasons at Real Madrid. What have you made of your former club's incredible success, the historic achievements of, uh, that they've done in this, in this competition? Well, uh, good evening, everybody. I think it's uh, how this, this club has been building. So the values, the, the players, the directors, the president, so everybody is putting together the effort to build a, one of the best clubs for sure in the world. And if there is any club that can win four <laughs> Champions League in a row, of it's course, it's it Real Madrid. <laughs> now we've got a former Los Blancos star, former Colchonero. Surely you've been talking about those matches that you had against each other backstage. How intense were those derbies in Madrid? Well, there was uh, always difficult, more difficult for us. It was, it was a, a good team playing. We always like to play away in Bernabeu more than in, in Calderon in that moment. But always playing against Real Madrid was difficult. And, and we play also together against Brazil. So it's always hard to play against this guy. <laughs> and Ricky, how was it for you? Yeah, it was uh, nice and fun because it's, it's a very good derby. So every time that we can we could play against Atletico and have this feeling in the city and the atmosphere uh, in this game was really nice. And as he, as he said, the Brazil against Uruguay was the same because this is this big rivalry between Brazil and Uruguay. Of course, we are friends, but on the field, <laughs> but not we on fight the for a win. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, lovely to hear from you both. You're, of course, helping us with the draw today. So if you could take your place at the table, we we'll look okay. forward to you, you getting to work later on. Um, do you know where you're going? <laughs> yes. I think, yeah, Diego, yeah, you're yeah. here. Please. And Kaká, you're over there. Uh, please give a big round of applause for Diego Forlan and Kaká. Definitely deserve it. <laughs> now, throughout the evening, we'll be handing out awards for last Champions League season's best goalkeeper, defender, midfielder and forward as well. That's right. These awards are voted for by the coaches of the 32 group stage clubs, along with 55 football journalists selected by the European Sports Media Group. So let's begin. What do you say? I think so. Let's do it. <laughs> let's begin with the goalkeeper of the season, which goes to a Costa Rica international who certainly played his part in Real's third consecutive Champions League crown. Great highlights, so please welcome onto the stage the UEFA Champions League goalkeeper of the season, Gaylor Navas. Thank you. 
Bien, hola, buenas. Bienvenido. Gracias. Enhorabuena. Sí, Muchas gracias. De nada. Pero, ha sido el primer jugador de Costa Rica a jugar en la Champions. ¿Te sientes un embajador de tu país por todo lo que has hecho? Bueno, me siento muy, muy agradecido con Dios por esta oportunidad que me ha dado. Eh, me siento muy orgulloso de ser costarricense y de poder este, jugar la Champions League y poder dejar el nombre de Costa Rica y del Real Madrid lo más alto posible. Entonces, yo creo que para mí más que orgullo es un privilegio poder este, formar parte de este grupo tan selecto. Y tú eres el, el responsable de parar los goles, pero háblame sí. de la importancia de la comunicación y relación con la defensa, con, con Sergio, Marcelo, Dani y, y Rafael. Bueno, para mí ellos son sumamente importantes. Yo creo que aparte de tener una muy buena relación dentro de la cancha, en la cual tenemos que comunicarnos súper bien fuera de la cancha también, este, son como mi familia en el fútbol, entonces... Siempre voy a estar sumamente agradecido con ellos, igual que con todos mis compañeros, pero ellos que están ahí de cerca, que, que viven conmigo esa intensidad de que no nos hagan goles, yo creo que esto también es gracias a ellos. Es fantástico tenerte aquí con nosotros esta noche. Ladies and gentlemen, the UEFA Champions League goalkeeper of the season, Cairo Navas. Muchas gracias. Nos vemos. Congratulations once again to Gaylor. Okay, it's time to uh, get down to business. It's what you're all here for. It's what everyone's waiting for. It's time to begin the UEFA Champions League group stage draw. And for Pedro and myself to uh, do what we do best is make way make for way. everyone else. It's time to make way for the draw experts this time. So please welcome them as they join us on stage. The UEFA Deputy General Secretary, Giorgio Marchetti, and Michael Heselschwert, the head of club competitions at UEFA. Good evening, gentlemen. Lovely to have you both with us. Giorgio, you take the floor. Thank you, Rajmin. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the draw ceremony for the 2018-2019 UEFA Champions League group stage. Firstly, I would like to offer my congratulations to the 32 teams who have qualified for the world's most prestigious club competition. I will be dreaming of lifting this illustrious trophy on the 1st of June of next year. The road to Madrid starts today, and over the coming months, we will all be looking forward to some enthralling action on the pitch, as the top clubs from across the continent go head to head. However, before we get to the draw, and to be ready for that, please take a quick look at the technical procedure. The 32 teams have been allocated to four pots in accordance with the following principles. Pot one will comprise the UEFA Champions League title holder, Real Madrid, and the UEFA Europa League title holder, Club Atlético de Madrid, as well as the domestic champions of the six top-ranked associations in the access list. The remaining 24 teams have been divided into three pots based on their position in the UEFA club coefficient ranking. Since the same number of UEFA Champions League matches are played on Tuesdays and Wednesdays, the groups are divided in two colours, red for groups A to D and blue for groups E to H. The red groups will play on one match night and the blue groups will play on the other. This will alternate from match day to match day. For TV coverage reasons, every two teams from one country are paired in order to be split in red and blue groups. Please also note that based on a decision taken by the UEFA Executive Committee, teams from Russia and Ukraine shall not be drawn in the same group. The Champions League and Europa League title holders, as well as the domestic champions of Pot 1, will be drawn first. A ball will be drawn at random and open to display the name. The computer will then show which groups are available for this club, in accordance with the established principles such as country protection and TV pairings. A draw is then made to determine which of these available groups the club is assigned to. It must be noted that the number of options available to a team depends not only on the team's own attributes, for example, winter venue, and those of the teams already drawn, but also on the attributes of the other teams still to be drawn. This is due to the computer calculations needed to anticipate all possible scenarios 
and to prevent any deadlock situation. Once the first eight teams of pot one have been allocated, the same procedure will apply for the pots two, three and four to complete the groups. Once the draw procedure has been completed, a computer draw will determine the final position of all clubs within the eight groups, as the position in the group determines the match schedule. In this respect, the computer will ensure that stadium clashes and winter venues are taken into account. The match calendar will be released two hours after the draw ceremony. And we do hope everybody's memorized that, of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> Good stuff. OK, let's take a look at the teams in pot one, which combine for a grand total of 25 European Cup trophies. 13 of them belong to Real Madrid, five-time winners Barcelona, also five titles for Bayern Munich and two for Juventus. Those are just some of the stats, but the stat man is Giorgio Marchetti. <laughs> so I'll give you the floor. Thank you, Pedro. Yeah, it's always an emotion to start another Champions League with this uh, impressive lineup. Uh, as a matter of fact, we have 47 titles together in this, uh, in this competition and spread all over the four pots. So we start with pot one. I shuffle. This is not a difficult job because uh, all the groups are empty. So, Ricky, it's up to you. Tell us which is the first uh, team to go into the first group. And the first team to be drawn for the 2018-19 season is... Paris Saint-Germain. It's the French champion of Paris Saint-Germain. And obviously, it's the first team, so they can go into any of the eight groups, A to H, whether they are red or blue, doesn't matter. And uh, we'll see. Paris Saint-Germain with uh, their three kings in front to uh, chase uh, the title after having been semi-finalists in 1995. Now, Diego will tell us in a second uh, which is the group of uh, Paris Saint-Germain. Group C. C. So we start with Group C and uh, with Paris Saint-Germain. Ricky, another team, please. For a second group. Real Madrid. So, and here we are with the, uh, the title holders, uh, repeated title holders, Real Madrid. And Real Madrid uh, can go into all the seven uh, groups, uh, not including Group C, of course, which is taken by Paris Saint-Germain. How many things can be said about Real Madrid? Too many. Too many, too many uh, the only records in this competition. Winning three times in a row the, uh, the Champions League and uh, with the record of participations in the uh, European Cup, 49 in total. Group G. G. So Group G is the group of Real Madrid. And uh, with this, we are ready for another team and another group. So after Paris Saint-Germain and the uh, title holders of Real Madrid. FC Bayern München. It's another name of the European aristocracy, five titles, Bayern München. And for Bayern, uh, the uh, groups available are the six remaining groups, uh, A, B, D, E, F, uh, and uh, H. So Bayern, uh, with their five titles in the competition, and the teams, uh, which is second only to Real Madrid uh, for matches played uh, and goals scored exactly. in the UEFA Champions League and the uh, Champions Cup. Their last title coming in 2013. Yes, exactly. A German derby. It was a German derby in, in Wembley. Exactly. Group E. E. So, Bayern München are taking their place in the group uh, E. And uh, another team is uh, ready to be drawn to 
captain another group. FC Barcelona. FC Barcelona, another five titles here, so we are adding titles to titles. So for Barcelona, only three of the groups are available for the pairing reasons, and the groups are A, B, or D in the red part of the table. So one of these three groups will accommodate FC Barcelona. Group B. B. So Barcelona is the team for Group B. Uh, we are halfway through part one and uh, another team. So it's interesting to, uh, to see that Barcelona have won uh, the, their group phase in the last 11 years, consecutive years. The only team uh, which has achieved this. Club Atletico de Madrid. And uh, now Club Atletico de Madrid. For Atletico de Madrid, the possible groups are A, D, F, and H. So, almost ready. Uh, Let's check. Uh, it will be a bit group. emotional for Diego. Yeah, Diego picks yeah. for Atletico. Atletico de, Ma Atletico de Madrid actually have an interesting record because uh, in the last nine years they have played five final, European finals, combining Champions League and Europa League and three Super Cups. So, no one else has been able to uh, achieve this. And Atletico de Madrid go to? Group A. A, the first group in alphabetical order is the group of Atletico de Madrid. So three teams are left in the pot. And uh, we're ready to, uh, to see where they're going to be. Three domestic champions. Juventus. Starting with uh, Juventus. Seven times in a row, winners of the Italian Serie A. And the Juventus can be drawn into D, F, or H. Three groups. D, F, or H for Juventus. Let's see. Group H. H. So, from the first to the last group, uh, and the Juventus is the team of Group H. Now, only two teams are left, Manchester City and Lokomotiv Moscow. One of them will be drawn first. Manchester City. Manchester City, the uh, champions of England, uh, Group D or Group F, we have to, uh, to draw. Record-breaking season for Manchester City last, last year. Yes. With points, with goals. Pep Guardiola side really great, dominated great season the Premier for League. Pep Guardiola and this squad. No doubt. They were... It's their eighth straight appearance in the Champions League as well. Yes. Group F. F. So F uh, is uh, the group uh, of uh, Manchester City. So only one team is left. We know which team, but uh, Ricky has to show us the name uh, on the paper. Don't do the draw now, because they get out of paper. Lokomotiv Moscow. The team is Lokomotiv Moscow, the champions of Russia. And the champions of Russia will play the UEFA Champions League group phase in Group D. The last group, with this, we have completed part one. Thank you, gentlemen. OK, so now we have our first teams in their groups. The draw will continue shortly, but before that, it's time to present the award for the UEFA Champions League Defender of the Season. This accolade goes to another member of that record-breaking Real Madrid side, a man who was at the heart of the action as he captained his team to a third successive Champions League victory.
Another amazing campaign for the captain of Los Blancos. Please welcome UEFA Champions League defender of the season, Sergio Ramos. Buenas tardes. Buenas noches. Enhorabuena. Sergio, estuvimos en el mismo lugar el año pasado, hablando de la posibilidad de ganar tres consecutivas. ¿Cómo se siente como el capitán, ser el capitán de un grupo de jugadores que se van a quedar uh, leyendas para historia, bueno, para bueno, siempre? La verdad que, como dices, ser capitán pues siempre, después de tantísimos años en el club, pues es un privilegio muy grande y sobre todo una responsabilidad intentar liderar un grandísimo grupo con culturas muy distintas de jugadores, pero como recalcó ante mi compañero Keylo, yo creo que por encima de, de ser compañero, lo importante es ser un equipo y ser prácticamente una familia. Siempre no, nos hemos sentido así y yo creo que esa es una clave de, del éxito. La hemos sabido mantener y, y ojalá nos dure mucho porque es, es una, una época dorada ¿no? de, de jugadores eh, pues, que van a marcar y van a quedar como leyenda y ojalá podamos disfrutar muchísimos años de de poder celebrar este tipo de título, que es una alegría muy, muy grande. Sí, era una temporada increíble. Bueno, Kaka ya lo dijo, cuatro consecutivas. ¿Lo fijamos aquí? Hombre, eh, <risa> yo creo que por encima de todo siempre hay que, hay que creer, ¿no? Y independientemente después de, del esfuerzo, la dedicación que, que hay que de, dedicarle día tras día, pues eh, por encima de todo yo creo que tenemos un grandísimo equipo eh, con jugadores jóvenes, jugadores también un poquito más veteranos y entre todos hacemos una fusión perfecta y ojalá nos dure mucho y como no, ¿no? Eh, hay que intentarlo, hay que volver a defender esa grandísima Champions que nos encanta disputarla y, y que venga otro equipo a intentar pues reivindicando el título. ¿no? Lo veo, veteranos, los equipos, pero... ¿eh? Están mirándolos. <risa> no la vez. lleves, ¿eh? No la lleves. No, no, de momento no, pero muchas gracias, un placer. No, vamos a ver qué pasa esta temporada, entonces. Hablamos aquí, pero vamos a ver. Ladies and gentlemen, the ladies, uh, the, ladies, the uh, UEFA Champions League defender of the season, once again, Sergio Ramos. Enhorabuena. Gracias. All right, let's get back to the door. Reshman, Indeed. find out who the next teams are to come out. We've got pot two, which includes Borussia Dortmund, for example, also Manchester United, and many teams who are usual contenders in the world's top club competition. And Giorgio, that's your cue yes. to go on with the draw. Yes, and now, Ricky, Diego, your job is less easy than before because uh, you now decide who play against who. So the ball are getting hot, and for the avoidance of doubt, they are all hot the same, and no cold <laughs> balls here. <laughs> Please. You will confirm that there are no cold balls after you. <laughs> FC Porto. FC Porto. So FC Porto, all the groups are, are open for FC Porto. Uh, no exclusion. So let's see where this uh, club uh, which is a regular participant in uh, the UEFA Champions League, uh, 23 times since the inception of the UEFA Champions League, the same as uh, Real Madrid and Barcelona, and two times winners of uh, the European Cup in their glorious past. Let's see who they get. Yeah. So Diego is uh, almost ready if he manages to open the ball. He's, just, tell adding, us which he's is, just adding to the drama. Which is the group. <laughs> which will feature FC Porto. Group D. Group D. So in Group D, Porto will play against uh, FC Lokomotiv uh, Moscow, the champions of Russia. So from far west to far east, it will be a long travel between the two. This is where we start to hear the reactions in the audience as well. Yes. <laughs> Roma. Roma. AS Roma, Roma can go into six of the groups, A, B, C, E, F, and G. So, 
uh, with Roma. We have the second team of this uh, pot number two, the uh, semi-finalists of last year, with five clean sheets in their first five matches played at the Estadio Olimpico. They will try to do better than last year. Won't be easy, I guess. But uh, for sure they will try. Group G. G. So Roma goes into Group G, G and uh, in Group G, it won't be easy at all against uh, the uh, champions of Europe, of Real Madrid, 13 times winners of the trophy. Interesting. But already some great games shaping yeah, yeah. up. We'll have many more. Yes. Manchester United. So another four and a multiple former winner of the trophy, Manchester United. Only two of our groups in the blue part are possible for Manchester United. That's group E or group H. Group E or group H. Please lose the line. So for Man United. Won a total of 150 matches in the uh, European Champions Cup. Only Real group Madrid, H. Barcelona and Bayern did better. But, and this Group H means uh, that Manchester United will play against Juventus. So Juventus and uh, Manchester United is another very attractive uh, uh, fixture, for sure. For sure in Torino. Both matches in Torino and in Manchester. So the fans will enjoy great football. Borussia Dortmund. And uh, Borussia Dortmund now. Borussia can be drawn into A, B, or C. Borussia Dortmund. A, B, or C for them. Former winners in 1997. And uh, in a second, uh, we'll discover which is the group. Group A. A. So, Group A for Borussia Dortmund uh, will uh, take uh, Borussia Dortmund to Madrid, uh, to the uh, Metropolitano Stadium, to experience uh, what is the atmosphere of the stadium, which will host the final on the 1st of June of next year. I guess they would like to travel twice to uh, the Metropolitano. That's correct. <laughs> Make it there for the final, too. FC Shakhtar Donetsk. FC Shakhtar Donetsk from Ukraine, the champions of Ukraine, uh, they can be uh, allocated to Group E or Group F. Group E or Group F for Shakhtar Donetsk. And uh, for the champions of Ukraine. Group F. Group F. Uh, together with uh, Manchester City. So, Shakhtar and uh, Manchester City in Group F. We have three teams left in the pot. It's Benfica, Napoli and Tottenham Hotspur. Benfica. And we start uh, with uh, Benfica. Uh, Benfica has only one possibility, that's Group E which means that we are not uh, going to draw their group, but the, the team is allocated to Group E together with uh, FC Bayern München. Please, Ricky. So Benfica, winners of a playoff, tight playoff uh, against uh, Pauk. Napoli. And uh, now the turn of uh, Carlo Ancelotti's new team, Napoli. Napoli B or C, we will draw them in one of the two. And uh, we can expect another great challenge. They'll get Barcelona or PSG, correct? Group C. Group C means that Napoli will play against Ooh. Paris Saint-Germain. And finally, to complete, one team is left. Tottenham. Tottenham Hotspur, the Spurs, uh, will uh, uh, go into Group B. 
to play in Barcelona against FC Barcelona. And Giorgio, they don't call it the world's best club competition for nothing. Some fantastic games already to look forward to. We're halfway through, 16 teams more to draw. Before we continue with that, let's present the award for the UEFA Champions League midfielder of the season. The trophy goes to a man who had simply the year of his life. The UEFA Champions League midfielder of the season is indeed the man who had the season of his life, Luka Modric. <laughs> How are you? Luka, congratulations. For you, Luka. Thank you. Another unbelievable season. Talking about the group of players at Real Madrid that have been able to win this hat trick of trophies. What makes this group so special, in your opinion? No, first of all, I think it seems unreal that what we are achieving. It's not easy, but uh, I think team, uh, among the other things that this uh, team possessed, is like character, like quality, uh, togetherness that we have. But with a all this quality that we have without being a team, like, without being a family, would be very difficult to achieve and this, what we are doing. And putting you on the spot, four in a row, yes or no? <laughs> <laughs> we'll see, we will try like always. Uh, Real Madrid likes to play Champions League, this is competition of Real Madrid, and uh, we'll give our best like always. It's going to be difficult. Each year is more difficult because all teams wants to beat us, but we will try. We will try like always, and hopefully we can repeat it. Luca, congratulations once again. Another fantastic campaign. Ladies and gentlemen, the UEFA Champions League midfielder of the season, Luka Modric. Congratulations once again to Luca. OK, time to uh, get back to the draw. Let's take a look at the teams then in pot three. They include last year's finalists, the five-time winners, Liverpool. There's also a welcome return to the competition for Valencia and two Dutch teams, PSV Eindhoven and Ajax, four-time winners. Georgia, back to you. Thank you, Rajmin. So, pot three, another ten titles uh, here in play. If you see that you have 10 titles in pot three, it means that really the, the, the quality and that's uh, phenomenal. Incredible. Olympic, Olympic Lyon. Well, the Olympic Lyonnais, the first team drawn, and uh, they must be allocated to the blue part of the table, E, F, G, or H which are the four balls which are being now put in the, uh, in the pot. So let's see which is the group of Olympique Lyonnais. Group F. Group F. So Manchester City, Shakhtar Donetsk, Olympique Lyonnais, <coughs> who have uh, the best uh, Achievement is the semi-final they played in 2010 against Bayern. CSKA Moscow. And now it's the turn of uh, CSKA Moscow, uh, also to be allocated to the blue part uh, of, the, uh, of the table, uh, and the groups are E, G, or H. CSKA Moscow. Back to Champions League, quarterfinals are their best achievement in 2010 as well. They won the UEFA Cup as well. Yes, in 2005. In Lisbon, remember that well. Group G. 
Group G. Group G is the group of uh, Cesca Moscow, where they will have to climb the mountains of Real Madrid and uh, Roma. So with, uh, with this, uh, we can proceed now for uh, another go, another group, and another team. FC Schalke So zero now four. to Germany, Schalke 04. And Schalke can only feature in the red part, B, C, or D. So groups B, C, or D for Schalke. Semi-finalists of 2011 against Manchester United. Group D. Group D. So Group D means that Schalke will uh, play their Champions League against Lokomotiv Moscow and uh, FC Porto. Ricky, please uh, tell us which is the next team to be drawn. Valencia. Valencia, CF, uh, they can go into groups E or H for Valencia which have played two finals in 2000 and 2001. So actually the first uh, experience uh, in Champions League, they went to, up to the final and the following season again under the leadership of uh, Hector Cooper. But iconic players like Mendieta, Piojo Lopez. Group H. Group H. Uh, so Valencia will play against uh, Juventus and uh, Manchester United uh, in uh, the Group H. Uh, please. Uh, next team. Four are left in this uh, pot. PSV Eindhoven. And uh, we start from PSV Eindhoven, fresh from their playoff against uh, Bate Borisov. They can be allocated into the, uh, uh, the four groups. There is no particular condition here. The groups are A, B, C, or E. For this club. Coming through the playoffs. Yes, uh, after defeating Bate Borisov with one title in their uh, showcase, uh, the trophy of 1988. Group B. Group B. So B means that Eindhoven will face uh, Barcelona and Tottenham Hotspur. Not easy, for sure. <laughs> Got three teams left now in pot three. Yes, three teams uh, left in pot three. IFC Ajax. AFC Ajax, uh, and uh, for Ajax, uh, we don't have a draw because uh, they can only be accommodated in the Group E. Group E means that Ajax uh, will uh, play Bayern Munich and uh, Benfica in the group stage. So we have two teams uh, and two groups. So the groups which are still open are Group A and Group C. We've got 11 titles in that group, Giorgio, yes. with Bayern, Benfica and Ajax. AS Monaco. AS Monaco, our host of today, and Monaco can be drawn, uh, can be allocated uh, to Group uh, A. Monaco, so one team, please show us the name of this team. Wow. Wow, we're going to have another interesting group. <laughs> Liverpool FC. So uh, Liverpool, the runners-up. Uh, Liverpool will play against Paris Saint-Germain and Napoli in Group C to complete uh, awesome. pot number three. Okay, incredibly exciting ties coming up already. Of course, just eight teams remain. We will be finding out who they'll face in just a moment. But first, it is time to reveal the UEFA Champions League forward of the season. This award goes to a player who was the competition's highest goal scorer for the sixth year in a row. And he also scored at the UEFA.com goal of the season.
Okay, well, as you saw there, the UEFA Champions League forward of the season is Cristiano Ronaldo. Unfortunately, Cristiano can't be with us this evening, but we will, of course, make sure he gets his award to add to his ever growing collection. Of course we will. <laughs> now, congratulations, of course, to Ronaldo for another trophy. Time now to conclude the draw, and it's back to Giorgio as we look at the teams in pot four. They include the 2010 winners Internazionale and a group stage debut for Hoffenheim, the German side making their first appearance in the group stage. Yes, so we have an exciting pot four with teams from the uh, top ranked associations. Uh, and now this is really very important because with this we know everything about the group stage. Uh, so your hands are very precious. <laughs> Please. First group to be completed. Eighteen nine nine Offenheim. Offenheim. Uh, Offenheim. Uh, first experience uh, in the UEFA group stage, uh, Champions League group stage, uh, and Offenheim must be allocated to the blue part. Uh, and the groups uh, which are available are F, G, and H. <laughs> a bit of suspense. Diego, do a good job. Group F. F. So the first group completed is Group F, and we will see Manchester City, Shakhtar Donetsk, Olympique Lyonnais, and uh, Hoffenheim. <laughs> Second group to be completed, uh, concluded uh, with uh, a team from Pot 4. And the team is? Galatasaray. The teams are the Turkish champions of uh, Galatasaray. And uh, we have all the groups are possible here for Galatasaray. From A to H, uh, to the exclusion of Group F, uh, which has been taken already by, uh, by Hoffenheim. So let's see where the semi-finalists of 1989 uh, will, uh, are going to play. The only team uh, from Turkey actually having reached the semi-final of uh, our competition. We won the UEFA Cup as well with that great yes, team with uh, George Aji. Yes, in 2000 against Arsenal. Group D. D. So D, Galatasaray goes to complete Group D with Lokomotiv Moscow, Porto, Schalke. The next team is Young Boys. So, BSA Young Boys, the champions of Switzerland. Also, in this case, we can allocate them to any of the open groups, which means groups A, B, C. E, G, or H. So, for young boys, back to uh, UEFA Champions League after some years. Their best result was achieved a long time ago in 1959, where they played the semi final of the European Champions Cup. They also qualified this week. Yes, through the playoffs, yeah. Group H. H. So, young boys uh, together with Juventus, uh, Manchester United, uh, and Valencia for uh, our group H. Another five groups are uh, open, waiting for uh, the team uh, which uh, will take uh, position number four. Quite a welcome back for young boys. <laughs> yes. Facing and Juve, United, and Valencia. FK Red Star. So, the Red Star, Belgrade, or Cervena Zvezda. Uh, no conditions for Cervena Zvezda, which means that the five uh, groups uh, which are not completed yet, uh, A, B, C, E, or G, are available to, uh, uh, to host uh, Cervena Zvezda, which is a former winner of uh, the UEFA Trophy in 1999, and the only Serbian club uh, which has achieved this important title. And the group is? Group C. C. 
So Selvina Svezda, together with Paris Saint-Germain, Napoli, Liverpool. For Group C, we're halfway through the uh, pod number four. And uh, we have uh, some interesting teams left. Club Bruges. Club Brugge, uh, A, B, E or G, all are possible for Bruges. Bruges were the finalists in 1978, the only team from Belgium which has reached the uh, final of this uh, fantastic competition so far. So Bruges goes into group. Group A. A. Group A means uh, Atletico Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, AS Monaco, and the Club Brugge. Three teams are left. And three groups are still open, B, E, and G. FC Victoria Pilsen. So Victoria Pilsen, the champions of the Czech Republic, can go in two of the three groups, and the possibilities are E or G. So only two of the three are possible. Let's see which of the two, E or G. Group G. Group G. Group G, Real Madrid, Roma, Ceska Moscow, and Victoria Pilsen. The last two teams in the pot. FC Internazionale. Inter. So Inter Milano. And for Inter, we have only one possibility, that's Group B. Inter will play against Barcelona, Tottenham Hotspur, and PSV Eindhoven. And uh, here we go, with the last team. So this is another tough group, I would say. Oh, yes. Very much so. Very tight, very difficult. One team to complete this draw. Aika Athens. Aika Athens, uh, yes, uh, it is Aika Athens, the uh, Greek champions. And uh, Aika Athens will complete the Group E together with uh, Bayern München, Benfica, and AFC Ajax. All right, so we've got our lineup complete. Let's go through all eight groups very quickly. In Group A, we've got Atletico de Madrid, Borussia Dortmund, AS Monaco, and Club Bruges. In B, it's Barcelona, Tottenham, PSV Eindhoven and Inter. In Group C, PSG, Paris Saint-Germain, Napoli, Liverpool and Svena Zvezda, which is also Red Star Belgrade, of course. Well done on that. Thank you, I tried. Group D, Lokomotiv Moskva, uh, Porto, Schalke and Galatasaray. It's Bayern Munich, Benfica, Ajax and Ajax Athens in Group E, while in F, Manchester City, Shakhtar Donetsk, Olympique Lyonnais and Hoffenheim. In Group G, the current holders, Real Madrid, AS Roma, Siska Moskva and Victoria Pilsen. And completing the draw in Group H, it's Juventus against Manchester United, Valencia and Young Boys. Some mouth-watering ties to look forward Absolutely. to, no doubt. For now, I'd like to thank all four gentlemen for your skillful handling of proceedings. Michael, Giorgio, Ricky, Diego, thank you very much. Thank Ladies and gentlemen, thank please you. give them a warm round of applause. Very exciting stuff. Now we move on to the next part of the event. It is time to introduce a brand new accolade. The Equal Game Award is given to a player who has acted as a role model in promoting diversity, inclusion and accessibility across European football. To announce our winner, please welcome back to the stage the UEFA president, Alexander Cheferin. Welcome back, President. A year ago, UEFA kicked off a new campaign, Equal Game. Tonight, we start a new award as well. Could you tell us who the winner is? 
the winner is Guram Kashia. And Guram, I will explain why he won. Guram receives this award for taking a courageous public stand for equality. Whilst playing for the Dutch top division side Vitesse last season, the central defender joined other team captains in wearing a rainbow armband, signifying support for the LGBT community. Kashia's gesture was greeted with an extremely hostile response in certain quarters in his native Georgia. There were even some calls for him to renounce playing for the national team. Nevertheless, he was defiant in the face of the threats he received, publicly insisting he had no regrets about wearing the armband and underlining his full support for diversity and inclusion. Indeed. Sadly, though, Guram can't be with us here this evening. He's playing for San Jose Earthquakes in the MLS. Uh, but to accept the award on his behalf, please welcome the president of the Georgian FA, Levan Kobiashvili. Levan, welcome. Good evening. You can get the Equal Game Award from the UEFA president. Just a couple of words on what this means for Guram and Georgian uh, FA. Okay, I speak to Chairman. Yeah, it's okay. Um, uh, Erstmal, uh, großes Dankeschön am President. Das war großes Respekt an uh, Guram und uh, das war schwierige Zeit für ihn. Und uh, einige Leute in Georgien haben die gesagt, ja, Guram sollte nicht mehr von Nationalmannschaft spielen. Und Guram hat er richtig geantwortet. Er hat gesagt, wenn einer Fan gibt es in meine Heimat, da komme ich in Georgien und spiele ich für ihn. Ich will von hier sagen, ich bin die einzige Fan. Und es gibt viele Fans in Georgien, dass die wollen alle Guram sehen in Georgien mit georgischer Nationalmannschaft. Großes Respekt an Guram. Danke. Thank you, Levan. As, as don't leave us yet, as Reshmin was explaining, uh, Guram is out playing in the States. He actually has a game this week for the earthquakes. He did want to send us a message, so here it is. I would like to thank you, uh, Mr. Alexander, for giving me this award and uh, all organization UEFA. It's it's really great achievement for me to achieve this uh, award for me, for my family and for my country. Uh, I was really surprised to getting this award, but it's really, really uh, surprised me, but I'm really grateful to get this. Uh, football has always been my, my love, my passion. Uh, I will keep uh, playing football and also will inside the pitch and outside the pitch, I will, I will stand for human beings equality. So uh, thank you once again, and uh, I'm really grateful. Great guy, Guram, and a worthy winner of the first ever Equal Game Award. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, it's time uh, for a change of scenery. Love that effect. I know, did you feel it? Right, as we present our final two awards of the evening, the UEFA Men's and Women's Players of the Year. These awards honor the very best footballers playing in any of UEFA's national associations or clubs over the last season and are voted for by a combination of coaches and journalists. They are indeed, so let's begin with the nominees for the UEFA Women's Player of the Year.
I'm sure you'll agree, three amazing players who each had amazing seasons, any of whom would be worthy winners of this incredible award. Amandine Henri, who won her fourth Champions League title with Lyon, her Lyon teammate Ada Hegerberg, whose 15 goals mean she now holds the record for the most goals scored in a women's Champions League season. Two great nominees, but our winner this year is Danish international star Pernilla Harder, who won a league and cup double with Wolfsburg and also scored a goal in that brilliant Champions League final as well. Pernilla is unable to join us this evening. She's away on international duty with Denmark at the moment, but we made sure she not only got the trophy, but also sent us this message. Hello, I hope you all have a really nice evening. I'm extremely proud and honored to receive this award. It has been a dream for me since I was a little kid. And there is, of course, a lot of people I want to thank. Uh, I want to say thanks to my family because they are the biggest support. Then I also want to say thanks to the teammates, coaches and the staff around the national team. And of course, also in Wolfsburg. Um, it's important that the team is uh, on a high level for me to, uh, to be on a high level. So therefore, I, I will give a big thanks to, to Wolfsburg uh, for an amazing season. And uh, yeah. Goodbye, have a really nice evening. <laughs> we thought you'd finish there. Yeah. <laughs> we are having a nice evening, even though Pernilla couldn't be here with us. Warm round of applause is much appreciated and very well deserved, amazing creative nice. player. So on to our final award of the evening, the UEFA Men's Player of the Year. Let's take a look at the three nominees in action. Well, I'm here with two of the three nominees, Luca and Mo. I'm going to start with you, Luca. Um, yours is a very unique story, and I know you don't talk about it often, but um, you know, you've lived through hardship, a child refugee. You um, had a dream of becoming a professional footballer. How crazy is it to consider that journey to where you are now, playing at the highest level, making history in this competition, and of course, captain in Croatia to the first World Cup final? No, it's it's amazing. This is really dreams com coming true for me. This is all that I dream for, uh, playing for the best club in the world, uh, winning trophies with them, and uh, also uh, playing for national team, being captain. It's uh, one of the things that I'm most proud of. And recently we achieved something special for Croatia and uh, it's been it's been a long road for me, but uh, I am where I always wanted to be, and uh, I'm really happy and proud that everything that I achieved in my career, and uh, uh, I just need to continue. I'm sure you will, but it's a wonderful story of dreams coming true. Luca, congratulations on your nomination. 
Mohammed, Mo, I'm going to call you both, as we talked about backstage. It was an incredible debut season for you with Liverpool, of course. You broke the English Premier League goal-scoring record, 32 goals in a 38-game season, and you also, of course, reached your first Champions League final. As an Egyptian man playing at the very highest level, how much does your identity, your background, your nation's expectations, how much does that inspire you to be the best? Great. I mean, you do something for the first time. No one has done it as Egyptian before. It's something great. It's something I have to be proud of. You know, you, when you see like 100, pers 100 million person as Egyptian, as Arab, as African, they see you as a role model. So something I have to be very proud of. And something sometimes you feel pressure because of that, but something makes you also work hard and, yeah, you do your job more and better, better and better, yeah. And better and better yeah. and better, as we've seen. <laughs> Congratulations to the two of you for your nominations and to Cristiano, of course, who's not with us today. We will be finding out who will walk away with the trophy in just a moment. But for now, Pedro, back to you. Yeah, we'll find out shortly. Reshmin, while you join me back on stage, we're also going to welcome Reiner Holtschuh, who's from European Sports Media, and the journalists that are part of this group helped vote for this award. He's got the winner's envelope. How are you? Fine. Great to see you. Thank you very much. We'll unveil it very quickly. Thank you, Rainer. And Reshmin will eventually get back here. Come on. <laughs> it's a very narrow skirt. You won't know. <laughs> All right. Well, to present the award for the UEFA Player of the Year, we'd like to welcome back on stage the President, Alexander Ceferin. Here we go. UEFA's player of the year is Luka Modric. Luca, we've talked a lot about your, your upbringing, your success. As you stand here as the UEFA Player of the Year, what are you feeling right now? Ah, it's an incredible moment for me and I feel really excited and proud of this great award. And uh, I would like to thank everyone who voted for me to receive this award, to my club Real Madrid, to my teammates, coaches that they are supporting me always in my good moments and less good moments and this award is, belongs to them as well. And when you look back, was there someone who inspired you the most, motivated you the most to reach your goals? I think it's my father. He is the person that took me to my first training session, uh, always pushing me to fight for my dreams, to never give up, to believe in myself. and. Uh, I owe him a lot uh, for, uh, for everything and uh, that I am where I am today. Luca, congratulations. Another warm round of applause for the UEFA Player of the Year. Well, that brings tonight's show to an end. Congratulations from all of us to Luca and to Pernilla. And thanks again to the UF President Alexander Cheferin and all of tonight's award winners and special guests. Now, as we look ahead to the Champions League season, believe it or not, there's only about three weeks left for it to kick <laughs> off. So start marking those calendars and good luck to all the teams that are taking part. Yeah, it comes around quickly. I can't wait for it to start all over again. From Pedro and myself and everyone here in Monaco, it's been a real pleasure to have your company. Thank you for joining us. Good night. Good night. Good night.